All right, so you want to dive into Kali Linux, huh? We'll get ready because we're going deep. You've sent over some really interesting stuff from their website. And it seems like you're not just content with knowing what it is. You want to know how it works, how it's become so central in the cybersecurity world. And lucky for us, we have a true expert in the field to help us unpack it all. Happy to be here. What I'm especially interested in is how Kali Linux has become almost synonymous with ethical hacking. It's like the ultimate digital detectives toolkit. It definitely is. What we call ethical hacking is really penetration testing, right? Exactly. Systematically testing computer systems, networks, web applications. Finding those vulnerabilities before the bad guys do. So before someone with malicious intent can exploit them. Exactly. And Kali Linux, that's what it's built for. So instead of having to cobble together your own set of tools, Kali is ready to go. It's purpose built. But what makes it different? I mean, couldn't I just use any operating system and download a bunch of security tools? Well, you could. But first off, Kali is built on Debian Linux. Okay. Which is known for stability and security in its own right. Right. But Kali takes it several steps further. It comes pre-packaged with literally hundreds of specialized tools. Hundreds. Hundreds organized into what are called meta packages. Meta packages. See, now there's a term you don't hear every day. What are those? Think of them like specialized toolkits right within through. the larger Kali ecosystem. Say you're focused on wireless network security. Right. There's a meta package just for that. Bundles tools like air cracking to test your Wi-Fi security. Or you're deep into web application security. Okay. There's a meta package with Burp Suite, other tools tailored for that. It's all about efficiency. Having the right tools for the job. Exactly. Instead of one size fits all, Kali lets you customize. And judging by the number of tools listed on their website, there's a meta package for everything. Yeah, there's a lot. But it's not just about the tools, is it? Yeah. It's gotta be about the community too, right? Absolutely. That's one of Kali's biggest strengths. That's what I'm thinking. Active and supportive community. They've got forums, IRC channels, a ton of documentation. That's gotta be so helpful. It makes it so much easier for beginners and professionals alike to learn. Right. To troubleshoot and collaborate. You know, that's something that always stands out to me, the power of a dedicated community. Especially in a field as complex and as constantly changing as cybersecurity. Yeah, the landscape changes so rapidly. Having that network of support and shared knowledge. Invaluable. So we've talked about these meta packages, these kind of like customized toolkits within Kali. But now I kind of want to get down to brass tacks here and talk about some of these individual tools. Okay, sure. Because you go to the website and they've got some pretty intriguing names. Yeah. Air cracking, burp suite. Right. And then, of course, there's John the Ripper. You got to talk about John the Ripper. John the Ripper, that's a classic. Okay, so that sounds like something straight out of like a cyberpunk novel. It does. It does. What is that? So John the Ripper is a password cracking tool. Powerful password cracking tool. Okay, now password cracking, that sounds a little unnerving. Isn't that something, you know? Yeah. That's the bad guys. <laughs> it depends who's using it right. Mm -hmm. In the wrong hands, John the Ripper. Right. Could be used for malicious purposes. But ethical hackers, we use it to assess the strength of a system's passwords. Okay. So it simulates various attack methods. Things like dictionary attacks, brute force attacks. So it's literally trying every combination it can. It's trying to crack the code so to speak. Oh, wow. Okay, so it's like a stress test for your passwords. Exactly. You're essentially trying to break in, but ethically, to identify those weak links and then fix them. Before a real attacker can get in. And before someone can come along and exploit those vulnerabilities. Exactly. Okay. It's like, you know, testing how well a door is secured. You're not trying to break in and steal everything. Right. You're trying to find the vulnerabilities so you can reinforce them. That's a great way to put it. And, you know, it really highlights why understanding these tools, even just conceptually, yeah. is important for really anybody who cares about cybersecurity. Absolutely. So, yeah. The more you understand about how these things work, right. the better you can protect yourself. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. So we've talked about password cracking, but I imagine that Kali has tools for all sorts of security assessments. Oh, yeah. It's not just passwords, right? It's incredibly versatile. You've got tools for analyzing network traffic to detect suspicious activity. Okay. You've got things like Burp Suite, which is really a whole suite of tools itself. Okay. Designed specifically for testing web applications. Okay. Looking for vulnerabilities like SQL injection, cross-site scripting. So it was really covering all the bases. Oh yeah. There are even tools that delve into social engineering. No kidding. Simulating phishing campaigns. Oh wow. To see how, you know, 
how well employees are trained to identify those kinds of attacks. That's fascinating. Okay, so it really is like that digital detectives toolkit that we were talking about. It really is. It's just amazing to me how these tools, which again, in the wrong hands, could be used very maliciously. Are actually instrumental in making our systems more secure. Right. It, it all comes down to how they're used. Exactly. And that's why the ethical aspect of ethical hacking is critical. It is. Now, speaking of different ways that Kali can be used... I was really intrigued by this Kali Everywhere idea. They talk about this on their website. Right. It seems like you can run this on anything. Laptops, virtual machines. Pretty much, yeah. Even Android phones. That's a lot of power in your pocket. It is. And that flexibility is one of the things that makes Kali so valuable for security professionals. Right. Because they can assess security from pretty much anywhere. They're using the same familiar tools, same interface, whether they're on-site, working remotely, you know, even at a coffee shop. I got to admit, I mean, the image of somebody like casually hacking into systems from their phone, yeah, even if it's for ethical reasons, still has kind of a spy thriller vibe to it. It does. It does. But remember, it's all about context and intention. Right. A scalpel can be used for surgery or to cause harm. It all depends on who's holding it. That's a great analogy. And it really, I think, underscores the importance of you know, the ethical considerations in the cybersecurity world. Exactly. It's not just about having the skills, it's about using them responsibly. And that's something that's emphasized again and again throughout the Kali community. I would imagine so. It's amazing how Kali has become this incredibly versatile platform. But I think with all this talk about ethical hacking, penetration testing... Hmm. It's easy for someone who's, you know, not a cybersecurity expert to think like, Thanks, what's in it for me? Yeah. Why should I care about any of this? Yeah, that's a fair question. It's one I get a lot, actually. Yeah. And it's an important one. You see, Kali Linux, it's a powerful tool. It's a tool for security professionals. Mm. But those underlying principles... Yeah, and they really apply to everybody. Especially in the digital world we live in now. What do you mean by that? Well, think about it. Every time you log into your bank account. Right. Every time you buy something online. Or even just check your email. You're trusting those systems. Yeah. You're trusting that they're secure. That they're not going to get hacked. And the reality is those systems are constantly being tested, probed. Right. And sometimes attacked. So in a way, understanding how those attacks happen. Understanding the tools, mm -hmm. even if we don't use them ourselves. That makes us all more informed digital citizens, right? Yes, exactly. It's like, you know, if you're learning about a new city. Okay. If you understand the layout. If you know where the potential dangers are, you know the best ways to get around, you're less likely to get lost, right? right? Less likely to be a victim of a scam. Less likely to fall prey to, yeah, the dangers that are out there. Exactly. That's a great analogy because yeah. it really drives home that point that cybersecurity is not just about, like, you know, firewalls and... And complex algorithms. It's yeah. about awareness. Yes. It's about education. It is. And, you know, in a way... Taking some responsibility for your own digital footprint. Absolutely. The more you know. The more you understand the tools and techniques being used. Right. By the good guys and the bad guys. The better equipped we all are to stay safe. Well said. Yeah. This has been uh, incredibly insightful. This deep dive into Kali Linux, really appreciate you breaking it down. It's amazing how a single platform like this can be used for both, you know. Offense and the defense in the cybersecurity world. It really is. It speaks to the dual nature of knowledge. Right. And the importance of using it responsibly. Exactly. So if our listeners take away one thing from this deep dive, it should be that cybersecurity is everybody's responsibility. And the more you know, the safer you are. I'm going to say it better myself. <laughs>